Hey, how are you? This is part two of the Top Bar Beehive build. And if you didn't see part one, I'll put a link on the screen. Just click on that link and it will take you right to part one. So, the bees ended up coming on Wednesday, or I picked them up on Wednesday. I got an email on Monday night that I needed to pick up the bees. So it was kind of a mad rush to get the other hive finished and painted and put the roof on. Uh, but now I've got two hives outside with bees in both of them. And I still have the hive here that we were working on last week. And when we left, we were just about to attach the roof to the hive with hinges. So let's go ahead and finish that up and then we'll add the roof stop. I'm using three inch galvanized hinges and I'm attaching the hinge two and three quarters of an inch in from the end of the roof stop. If you remember, this is the side of the roof stop that I padded out by a quarter of an inch. I wanted to point this out. I ended up having to shim this side of the roof or the hinge a little bit, about a sixteenth of an inch. I'm using a piece of Azek here, but you could use anything really. And the reason why I'm, I'm using this is the roof was a little bit off and the right side was coming down on the bars on the far end of the hive. So I'll try to explain that a little bit better. I'm not sure if that makes sense. But that was a pretty easy solution, and once it's all painted, you'll never see it. I thought I'd point this out before I put the roof sheathing on. You can see I've got an inch and a half reveal between the edge of the hive and the roof support on either side. And that gives me a quarter inch reveal between the edge of the bar and the roof support. If I didn't use the shim, the roof would kick over to one side and instead of the roof closing over top of the bars, the roof support would hit the bar and the roof wouldn't be able to close. Next I'm going to add a roof stop which is basically like a door stop. I want to be able to open the roof and have it far enough out of the way so I can work in the hive. And for this I'm going to use a 2x4. This is a cutoff from one of the legs. I'm going to use the same 22 degree angle just because it looks a little bit nicer than a straight cut measure over 19 inches and cut it back. To find the placement of the stop I'm using a piece of scrap wood that measures three quarters of an inch and I'll hold the two by four level with that piece of scrap wood and then sneak a pencil behind to mark out where those bolts are because I'll have to remove material from the two by four before I can attach the stop to the legs. I'll use a Faustner bit to remove the material. Now I'm using one of the cutoffs from the inside ends and I'm cross cutting at a 9 degree angle. Now I'll hold this piece flush with the top and put a mark at the bottom of the 2x4 and then just draw a gentle curve up to the point. and now I'm going to sheathe it. I'll need two pieces of half inch plywood that measure 11 and a half inches by 48 inches.
Now you can see I've got a bit of a gap here and that's fine to be honest with you. You could just leave it like this. But I'm going to close it so I'll set my saw fence at 20 degrees and rip at the peak on this side and on this side. I've taken a minute to mark out where the supports are. Next I'll snap a chalk line and that way when I screw the roof down I'm always screwing into a support. Once you finish sheathing the roof, then you'll need to waterproof the roof. And you might be able to get away with just painting the roof or painting it with roofing cement. But I'm going to use aluminum because I like the way it looks and I have it. So aluminum is really easy to work with. I'll measure out 48 and a half inches, score it with a razor knife, and break it. The first piece of aluminum that I cut was 20 inches wide and I'll also need two pieces that are 6 inches wide. Now I want to make a crease for the roof peak. So I've measured up 10 inches on each side and I'll hang this off of the table right at the 10 inch mark and now I'm putting a straight edge on top of that mark. and then I'll clamp down the straight edge. You can see that both straight edges are flush and I'm going to use my thumb and apply pressure along the straight edge trying to get a nice even crease at the peak of the roof. I just finished attaching the aluminum to one side of the roof and now I'll spin the roof around and we'll do the other side. I'm going to start by slipping the 6 inch piece of aluminum up underneath the larger piece of aluminum and then I'll clamp it temporarily in place with a squeeze clamp just to get it close. What I'm looking for is a quarter of an inch overhang all the way around. Okay, now the roof's in position and I'm going to use a sharpie and measure up from the bottom at two and a quarter. And if you know this finger straight line pencil trick, you can just make a straight line down the roof. If not, because you can't do this once you, re you lose your reach, you can hold the tape measure and kind of use the palm of your hand. And I'm holding the sharpie at four inches and again going down the length of the roof. And now from each end I'm going to put a mark at an inch and a half, 10 inches, and 20 inches. Flip the tape around and do the same thing on this side. And I'll attach the roof with number six half inch screws.
Okay, that's the last screw, and I'm still not done with the roof. I'm going to paint a strip of tar right where the screws are, just as a little more insurance. And again, I just like the way it looks. Sometimes I, I do things that are purely aesthetic. The three beehives in a row, uh, for some reason, I just like that. I like, I like that order. I, mean, I think a lot of woodworkers are a little OCD, and I'm definitely one of them. So, the way I'm going to do this is measure up five inches, put down a line of painter's tape, and then go ahead and paint it in with the uh, roofing cement. Okay, well it's a new day and I'm going to get started off by making the follower boards and I'll explain what those are as we work through the project. For this you can really use anything you have hanging around the shop. I'm using half inch Luan plywood and you'll need two pieces that measure 12 and 3 quarters by 12 inches. Now just like we did on the sides of the hive, we'll measure over 3 and 3 quarters on each side make a mark and then hold a straight edge at that mark and connect it to the point of the board and trace a line. Again, I'll make this cut using a circular saw. Clamping the board to the table makes the cut a little bit easier. On one of the follower boards, measure up two inches and find the center, which looks to be about three and a half inches, and drill a one inch hole. This is how the bees will get into the feeding chamber. I'm going to hold off on doing any more work to the follower boards and I'll move on to making the top bars because I need two of the top bars to attach to the follower board and that's how they fit in the hive. For the top bars, I'm ripping boards at an inch and a quarter. The measurement will be an inch and a quarter wide by 17 inches long. And the hive will take probably about 22 or 23 of them, but you could start off by just making 10 or 12, and that will get you started, and when you have more time, make a few more bars. I've clamped a stop to the bench, so I only need to measure once. Okay, well now that I've got some of the bars cut, I'm going to use two of them and attach them to the follower boards. So take a minute and draw a few lines on your bar to find the center. Add a little wood glue. and. I like to toenail the bar in place first, and this is where having a nail gun just makes things a lot easier. So I'll shoot one nail on each side. And now I'll flip the board over and shoot three or four nails in from the top. And this is how the follower board fits in the hive. All right, well, we're getting close. I know this video is going on a bit, but I didn't want to leave anything out. So we're finally getting the bars ready for the bees. And I'm going to bring the camera over, get a nice close-up of a bar from last year, and then we can talk about what comes next. The next step is to make this piece of molding. This is what the bees will attach their comb to. And the first thing to do is to rip a few pieces of wood at one half of an inch.
Now I'm changing the angle of the saw blade to 20 degrees. I set the saw fence at 5 sixteenths of an inch. I've run the material through the saw, now I'm going to flip the piece over and run it back through the saw. I've used the stop block again to cut all of the molding to length, which is 11 and a quarter inches. And now I'll attach the molding to the bars with wood glue and a few nails. I made a jig to help put the molding in the right place. As long as the jig is flush on the outside and on the end over here, the molding is in the right position. I'm using three quarter inch nails in the nail gun. I'm also adding blocks to the end of the bars. Now this really isn't necessary, but I find that the blocks help keep the bars in position on the hive. The blocks measure an inch and an eighth by an inch and a quarter. You'll need to add a little beeswax to the molding that you just attached to the bar. This is going to give the bees something to build off of and it also puts a familiar scent in the hive. Now you could paint this on the bar, but if you are making a lot of bars, this is a trough made out of aluminum with beeswax in it and it's on a hot plate and you can simply dip the bar in the wax and you're done. The next thing is the bee feeder and this is a design by Philip Chandler who's a well-known top bar beekeeper and I found uh, his video last year and the design worked great. So if you didn't know, sometimes you need to help get the bees through a dry spell. So for instance, right now there's not a lot in bloom. So we get a few warm days and the bees are looking around. They're not going to find too much. So the sugar syrup will help get them through those dry spells. So you mix up a little sugar syrup. This fits inside the hive. You poke holes into the top. This is a pickle jar with a push pin and atmospheric pressure will hold the liquid in the jar and then the bees stick their tongues up through the holes and that helps feed them. So let's just take a look and see how it fits in the hive. This is the follower board with the one inch hole at the bottom which allows the bees to get into the feeding chamber. This is the piece of plywood with the holes cut out for the jars and the jars fit in those holes. And Then you can use a piece of plywood to cover it and that's all it takes. Just a closer look at how the bees build the wax onto the bar. The very last thing is to attach a landing pad for the bees. And this is a 17 degree angle and I'll attach the landing pad just about an eighth of an inch below the holes. And the landing pad measures 11 and a half inches by two and a quarter deep. All right, well, that seemed kind of complicated. Uh, and it took a long time, but it really is. I and mean, it's a fun project. And if you want to build this beehive, you can find a parts list on my website. And the parts list goes in the order of the build. So uh, it's a lot of fun beekeeping. I, I have a blast with it. Uh, if this is the first time that you've tuned into my channel, I'd love it if you'd subscribe or share my videos on your social media and give me the thumbs up. And you can also find things that I've made or t-shirts on my eBay store and there's a link in the description. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you soon.
I've run the material. <laughs> All right. <sighs> All right. Forget. 